you are asked to find the probability of a sample mean pulled from a population, and before we actually find those probabilities, the thing we need to look at is what is the sampling distribution of the sample mean for that particular situation. Now when we're looking at the distribution of the sample mean, we want to say what the center, what the shape, and what the spread is. And a lot of times we do it in the order of the shape, the center, the spread. With the sample mean sampling distribution, the shape of the sample means will be normal if the individual numbers had a population whose distribution was normal, or if your sample size is large even if you don't know what the distribution of the individual numbers was. Large, for this scenario with the distribution of the sample mean, is if your sample size is 30 or more. So when we come to this first part of describe the sampling distribution of X-bar, we always want to think about that before we answer any probability questions about the sample mean, even if they don't ask us to do that to start with. It's kind of our introductory part to get all the information together. Well, here we have a simple random sample of size n equals 64. So there were 64 pulled in my sample is obtained from a population that has a population mean this symbol, remember, is mu. It's a Greek letter, and it's the symbol for the population mean of 38.5. And a population standard deviation, this symbol is small k sigma, and in statistics, that represents the population standard deviation of 4. And I want to describe the sampling distribution of x with a bar over it, so the sample means. Well, for our first part, our shape, it didn't say the distribution of the individual numbers was normal, but I do have that my sample size is greater than or equal to 30. 64 is the number bigger than 30. So the shape of my sampling distribution of the sample mean is normal. Since my sample size was greater than or equal to 30. And then the center, the population mean of the sample mean is the same as the population mean of the individual numbers. And in this specific situation, my population mean was 38.5. Now the standard deviation of the sample means, well, when I take numbers out of a distribution and take like 64 of them in this scenario, and I find the sample mean, and I do that over and over and over and over, the sample means are tighter knit around the center than the individual numbers were. And it's tighter knit around the center in the um, predictable way that it comes from the standard deviation of the individual numbers divided by the square root of how many you took in your sample. So for our particular problem, our standard deviation of our individual numbers is four divide by the square root of we had 64 in our sample. So that's 4 divided by, well the square root of 64 is 8, so that's 0 0.5. Simplifies to a half or 0.5. So now that I have that it's a normal distribution and I know its center and I know its standard deviation, I can answer, answer the probability question using the normal CDF because I have a normal distribution. So look very carefully, it's the population or the probability that the sample mean is greater than or equal to 38.1. So if I think about just the picture here, my normal distribution, the center is at 38.5. And remember, this is a number line. 38.1 is just a little bit less than 38.5, so it's to the left of it, but I want that the sample means are greater than or equal to the 38.1, so to the right of that 38.1. So if I draw a vertical line at 38.1 and shade over that span that I wrote on the number line, this is the probability that I'm looking for. Now remember,
remember the total area is one and the area shaded is the same as what my probability would be. So I have more than half of the graph shaded caught between the graph and the horizontal axis. So I'm expecting my probability to be bigger than 0.5. Well, let's see. So this is the normal CDF of, as I look from left to right, the low is 38.1. The high is forever right, so we're going to go 1E99. Then the mean of the distribution of the sample means, so that's 38.5. And the standard deviation of the sample means, and the standard deviation of the sample means is 0.5. So when I go through and I calculate that, I get 0.7881, and that's about 0.7881. Okay, the next one, what is the probability that my sample mean when I pull 64 out of the population and I find that average, that sample mean, what is the probability that the sample mean is less than 40.2? So here again, we have our normal distribution. The 38.5 is here. 40.2 is a little bit to the right of that. And I want less than the 40.2, so to the left. So we're looking at that area. So forever left is my low up to the 40.2 is my high. So we have normal CDF. of low negative 1 E99 comma high is 40.2 comma mean again is my 38.5 and my standard deviation of the sample means is 0.5 and for that I get 0.9997 Okay, and then lastly, what is the probability that my sample mean is between the 38.6 and less than or equal to 40.9? So again, we'll do normal CDF. The low is the 38.6. The high is the 40.9. The mean is 38.5 and the standard deviation is 0.5. And for that we get 0 0.4207. Now this normal CDF key, if you're using a TI-83 or a TI-84 calculator, you're going to do your second button and then the VARS key, which says distribution above it, and it's the second choice down underneath that that's the normal CDF. And if you have it where you have prompts, it'll ask you for the lower, the upper, the mean, and the standard deviation. If it doesn't give you the prompts and it just gives you this normal CDF with an open parentheses, you have to remember that it's low, comma, high, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation in the order in which you put it. Now the comma is above the 7 on your TI-83 or TI-84, if you aren't familiar where that's at. And then the other thing I want to um, comment on, the minus here is your negative sign. So not the subtraction, but the negative. And then this E is second the comma key. That puts it in scientific notation. So it really overdoes the process but it's a good way in order to make sure that you have good habits there in case your distribution has a mean that's really large or a mean that's really small that you're not like underestimating going to the extreme tails of it. But hopefully you'll f found this video helpful and make sure in the comments if you have any questions or any other types of examples that you would like me to do. Um, go ahead and say that and I'd be happy to upload new videos that would cover those other topics.